As the name implies, the Chidi X-Max is a very large, fully enclosed 3D printer. I teased a picture a while back on my Instagram of me sitting on the box it shipped in, and they weren't kidding, it's big. Along with a print volume of 300mm on the X, 250 on the Y, and 300 on the Z, it has a large 5-inch touchscreen, Wi-Fi and Ethernet connectivity, direct drive extruder, removable bed, and high quality rods and bearings. One thing I noticed right away was how smooth the X, Y axis moved manually. Not the most precise test, but something I like to do to check for binding on any machine. The X and Y axis glide around effortlessly, even with the belts properly tensioned. The whole extruder carriage rides on two smooth rods using four bearings, which adds a whole lot of rigidity to the extruder assembly. While we're here, let's take a look at what's under the extruder cover. There's a large blower parts cooling fan, a dedicated hot end heatsink fan, a direct drive extruder, and a daughter board for all the aforementioned connections with an attached ribbon cable to keep everything tidy. The removable build plate has a nice rough texture that I found even ABS stuck to very well and released prints without any issues. Although I had a few instances where it stuck a little too well due to an incorrect first layer height set in my slicer. The magnets used on the heat bed are washer style magnets, meaning they can be replaced if they ever lose their magnetism. They're also very, very strong. One thing about the bed you may have noticed, which is my first nitpicky con, the instructions for bed leveling and use of the machine are printed right on the build plate itself. Sort of an eyesore in my opinion, and I think that sort of literature is best kept in the manual. This unit is fully enclosed except for a large hole cut in the dome cover for the filament to pass through. Even if you're using the internal spool holder, which I didn't, this hole is still open and lets a fair amount of heat out. There are two fans to vent out the enclosure should it get too hot. They're 120mm PC case fans with detachable carbon filters on them. A far cry from the desired HEPA filters, but in my opinion even machines with HEPA filters don't manage to trap all the smell of ABS. That being said, some small HEPA filters could always be retrofitted onto the machine. The luggage handle style external spool holder is a bit of an issue. I had a few tangles with brand new filament rolls where the filament slipped over the edge of the spool and wrapped around the spool holder itself. This style of filament holder is fine for a machine with a bed that moves on the Y, but when the extruder moves back and forth, it's prone to pulling too much filament off the roll and creating a fair amount of slack that can create a tangle. Let's take a look at print quality. The first thing I printed was this large Black Panther helmet from do3d.com. It's a free model and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to print it yourself. I printed this in PLA and it turned out awesome. It's one of the biggest prints I've done and I was pleasantly surprised by the amount of detail this machine could produce. I slice this in Simplify 3D with the stock PLA profile for this machine, which is a built-in machine preset in Simplify. You can see that most of the retractions happened on the inside of the mask, leaving some blobbing. I suspect this was due to low travel speed and some incorrect retraction settings. In any case, these blobs mostly wiped away when I ran my finger over them. At 100% scale, the helmet fit perfectly and has just enough room to fit some foam padding. I highly recommend you try and print this thing. It's super cool. I then printed this large fluid vase from Prusa. Again, I managed to achieve great surface finish, but after some minor tweaking to my slicer settings, I was still getting some retraction issues in the form of stringing. After I was done printing large models, I turned my attention to printing ABS. Fully enclosed machines really excel with this filament. I'm not a huge fan of the fumes created by ABS printing, but the options when it comes to post-processing are a huge bonus for this material. Unlike PLA or PETG, ABS can be easily filed and sanded without the fear of melting or deforming the model from the heat caused by friction. Also it can be acetone vapor smooth to give a nice glossy finish and hide some layer lines. I printed a handful of functional prints to capitalize on the strength of ABS, 
one of which was a few extruder knobs that turned out great and should be more than strong enough. I also printed a small casting box for a silicone mold. You can really see the consistent extrusion and accurate z-axis by the walls on this print. Great finish quality here. Finally, I printed a skeleton half mask. Even with minimal first layer surface area and a few interesting bridges and overhangs, this thing stuck great and turned out awesome. So what's my final verdict on this machine? I've primarily been using my Zortrax M200 Plus for all my ABS printing, which is closed source and requires you use their slicer. Even their G-code is encrypted. I really enjoy the ability to fine tune my prints within my slicer of choice. If you're in the market for a fully enclosed printer for cosplay props or mechanical prints using exotic filaments, this should definitely be one to look at. Thanks to Chidi 3 d for sending me this review unit in exchange for an honest review. I'll leave a link to where you can check this machine out in the video description. If you're interested in more 3D printing content, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and happy printing.